It's quite peculiar how tech companies choose naming schemes for their products. If we take AMD's Ryzen, we had 1000, 2000, 3000, 5000 and finally 7000 series. Increment of 2000 was made to prevent user base from confusing new chips with their questionably named mobile 4000 and 6000 series, which are actually the same architecture as desktop 3000 and 5000 series. It's not like they have put themselves in that jar of pickles. So, in the end we didn't get mid-range 6600 but 7600 instead. And it might be for the better, cause we already have 5 CPUs with that number, let's see how they differ. Here's the lineup of the 6600 boys we tested. We'll start this confusion with the first one released. The Intel Core 2 Duo E6600 is a desktop processor with two cores launched in July 2006 at an MSRP of $224. It is part of the Core 2 Duo lineup using the Conroe architecture and is placed within socket 775. The processor has 4 MB of L2 cache and operates at 2.4 GHz. In the intro we were making jokes at the expense of AMD, but Intel is mostly the one we should blame, about 80%, for this situation. The Intel Pentium E6600 is the second Intel E6600 processor with two cores, launched in January 2010. The processor has a lower amount of cache with 2 MB L2 but operates at a higher frequency at 3.07 GHz. It is part of the Pentium Dual Core lineup, also using socket 775 and made with the Wolfdale architecture. Now, get ready to replace that E with Q, for this next absolute legend of a CPU from, once again, Intel. The Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 has 4 cores, launched in July 2007. From the spec standpoint, it's essentially like two E6600 Core 2 CPUs in one. It is part of the Core 2 Quad lineup using the Kensfield architecture, also socket 775. The processor has 8 MB of L2 cache and operates at only 2.4 GHz, but it's also known to be one of the best CPUs to overclock. And you can overclock it in a very peculiar way, by blocking some of its pins with electric tape. If we were to listen to AMD marketing when the next one was released, it's not the CPU, but APU. Now, what is an APU? A CPU with an integrated GPU. That's it. The AMD A8-6600K is a CPU with 4 cores launched in June 2013. It is part of the A8 lineup using the Richland architecture and goes into the socket FM2. The processor has 4 MB of L2 cache and operates at 3.9 GHz. Once again, we go back to Intel for our newest CPU in the lineup. The Intel Core i5-6600 has four cores, launched in September 2015. It is part of the Core i5 lineup using the Skylake architecture with socket 1151. The processor has 6 MB of L3 cache and operates at 3.3 GHz with a turbo boost frequency of up to 3.9 GHz. Overclocking is locked for this one and has a 0.2 GHz lower base clock than the unlocked i5-6600K. We haven't tested that one, but the expected performance would be similar to this one. The only confusion that applies here is the standard CPU suffix one, with Ks, Fs and other stuff. For testing purposes, we've assembled some test benches for these CPUs. We've used the best motherboards we had per socket and used an amount of RAM that makes sense for the platform. For LGA775, we used Asus ROG Commando. It's a motherboard designed for gaming enthusiasts. Based on the popular P965 chipset, the Commando has the now usual rear LCD, onboard illuminated buttons and heat pipe cooling arrangement as well as 8-phase power. It supports all Intel LGA775 processors and DDR2 memory for up to 800 MHz. We ran it with 4 GB of 800 MHz CL4 DDR2 memory for our three LGA775 CPUs. We could have used DDR3 memory for these, but that use case was fairly rare back then and the performance hit is minimal. ASRock FM2A55M-VG3 is a micro ATX motherboard that supports AMD A-series processors. 
so we'll use it to test our A8-6600K CPU. It has an AMD A55 FCH chipset and supports DDR3 memory. We'll pair it with two modules of 8GB of DDR3 1600MHz memory. Asus H110i plus D3 is a mini ITX motherboard that supports Intel LGA 1151 processors and we'll use it for i5-6600 benchmarks. This board uses DDR3 instead of the more commonly used DDR4 for this platform. While this is an impediment, it's not the only one, nor the largest. The chipset is a low-end one, but the mini ITX options were extremely limited back in the day. Nevertheless, as you will see, this will not prevent i5-6600 from dominating these charts. Once again, we'll pair this board with a total of 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz memory. The graphics card we used across all of these is GTX 950, which is powerful enough to make CPUs the bottleneck. Except maybe i5-6600. This was a decent card until the last few years when its 2GB of VRAM became far too little. We'll start the benchmark rounds with Mafia 2. While the game is very playable on all of our test subjects, the experience can get really choppy on Core 2 CPUs. Unsurprisingly, Pentium with the same name as its Core 2 counterpart shows a much more stable performance. In this game, CPU frequency matters more than amount of cache available. Next up is an indie game called Hard Reset. Once again playable on all CPUs, the game only stuttered on Core 2 Duo. The largest upset here is Q6600, almost achieving similar performance of a much younger AMD CPU. In Borderlands 2, our oldest and seemingly weakest CPU interestingly reaches a more stable performance. While the frame rate did suffer on all but i5, the game is perfectly playable on all of them. Regardless of the level of details, considering that GTX 950 is bottlenecked here. Not sure if better optimization or game utilizing multiple cores or CPU possess, but Tomb Raider performance doubled or tripled on low preset. So much so that we can assume not being bottlenecked on the Ultra preset. Outlier is the Core 2 Duo E6600 Ultra preset performance, which beats everything but i5. Hell knows why. In Talos Principle, we got an excellent performance from all of our test subjects. Here, the difference between Pentium and Core 2 CPUs is much smaller, as both of their respective strengths come to shine. Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt requires a new tier of performance from our test subjects and some of them just can't handle it. Stutters on dual-core CPUs are too annoying to be ignored and the game is far from playable. Interestingly, stutters are the worst on Pentium on low and medium presets, while the game behaves much better, still not playable, on ultra preset. Some of our CPUs would be useless here if not for the extraordinary optimization of Doom from 2016. While a bit stuttery on Core 2, the game is playable on low preset on all of them, on medium preset on Core 2 Quad, up to ultra preset on A8 and i5 CPUs. Assassin's Creed Origins is known to be a CPU dependent game, and here our Core 2 CPUs all fall by the wayside, even A8 struggles to output a playable frame rate in ancient Egypt. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Q6600 returns to perform with a good average and abysmal 1% lows. The game runs ok with i5 and A8 CPUs, with A8 failing to run it playable on the Ultra preset. Outer Worlds is a challenge for all of the CPUs, but runs on all of them. Some of them run the game, while some of them run the slideshow of the game. A8 manages to run it on low, while i5 manages both low and medium presets. Horizon Zero Dawn runs only on the youngest members of our test group. The game struggles to run on the AMD chip and is only properly playable on i5-6600. Not that anything about that was unexpected, considering the age of all of them by this point. Since AMD A8-6600 is APU, we should also see what kind of performance we can expect from its GPU part. And yes, this is an integrated GPU performance. Not great, not terrible, considering that it was able to run Tomb Raider, which was released the same year as this APU. On the same note and significance, here are the benchmark results we got from NVIDIA GeForce 6600. 
because why not? This performance is from the AGP version, so perhaps some limitations exist there as well. Either way, it's hard to confuse it with RX 6600 in any way. Back to our CPUs, here are the results from Cinebench R15 and R23. Not many surprises here either, as by now we have a pretty good idea of what we can expect from these CPUs. Considering the results here from i5-6600, we are positive that we could squeeze more out of it with the better GPU. That was quite a lot! These are some of the first benchmarks that we ran when we started our Attic adventure. To be honest, we fully expected that AMD will name its new mid-range CPU 6600, but that didn't happen. What's the big deal? Well, as you can see, these CPUs have far from similar capabilities, and people are easily confused. Especially when you have complicated sequences of letters and numbers. There are many cases of people buying one on the second-hand market, just to get something else entirely. With three of those being compatible with the same socket, this ruse could go on for years, or in some cases, was never uncovered. We could see someone offloading the good old A8 instead of the brand new Ryzen to the unexpecting buyer. Yes, they can still buy A8 7600 or Intel i5-7600, or Intel Core 2 Duo e7600, if they are extremely uninformed. Also, not to be confused with AMD Radeon RX 7600. We can only hope that hardware manufacturers are able to further push the boundaries of science and find some new numbers. For some reason, we think there are a lot of them, like infinite. We've had our fun with 6600, hopefully you had at least GTX 660 of that amount of fun. See ya around!